Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us, especially on this rainy, rainy day. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to give a special thanks to uh, Blair Clark and Heather Ramsey with The Warehouse at LiveForTheMusic.com. They had a soft opening this weekend in this wonderful space, and they quickly turned it around for our rainy event. So thank you to them. Also wanted to acknowledge the counselors that we have in the room. We have City Councilor President Eric Seidensticker with us, Councilor Sharp, and Councilor Carter. Thank you also. My name is Corey Meyer, and I'm the Executive Director of the Carmel Redevelopment Commission. I have been working with the Commission since January uh, to focus on the next phases of redevelopment in our city, and that includes finishing out the City Center project and uh, moving forward with Midtown, along with some other projects that we've got going on. We've been very busy and we're happy to announce some partnerships moving along and projects moving ahead. I have uh, been living in town for 14 years and I have seen the community transition. And I can say that uh, with Mayor Brainerd's vision and focusing on the redevelopment of Carmel and creating a new downtown, I am thrilled to be a part of that. I, can, I can't tell you, Mayor, where I was 14 years or 20 years ago when you started this process, but I was much younger. We all were. Yeah. That's true. I'm excited and thrilled to be a part of this process and the future of Carmel. So it's my honor to introduce Mayor Jim Brainerd. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. Carmel, like towns, small cities across the United States, uh, has evolved over the last 60 years differently than cities evolved prior to that time because of the advent of the automobile. Uh, as most of many of you know, Carmel was uh, initially named Bethlehem. It became a town in 1837. By close of World War II, there still had only about 800 people living here. Uh, in a small village center. And then it started to grow very quickly for a variety of reasons. Mainly because it was uh, easy to get out from Indianapolis because we finally got over 25% car ownership in this country and then grew and grew and grew in the 1950s. But like many cities, across the United States. That meant that the original walkable downtowns, which had older buildings with plumbing and heating and electrical issues, were many times abandoned or effectively abandoned. Um, and sprawl started on the edges of the city. 1986, when I took office, there had been an effort going on to try to invigorate life, attract capital, and fix up, generally fix up, what was known as the Old Town area. We looked at it, made the decision with the City Council to put about $20 million into fixing the streets, the storm sewers, to every the last CSOs, and combined storm and sanitary sewers, uh, brick accents, street lights, uh, really fixed the area up, and then started to work on the main street, put up the archways, and, and turned it into what well, we refer to as specialized retail, the art and design industry, because we recognize that Carmel's made up of 49 square miles. Even the island of Manhattan in New York is only 33 square miles. Uh, so it's a very big area, and we recognize that that small downtown from 1837 wasn't large enough to serve what will be our eventual population. We also had an abandoned uh, strip center just north of City Hall, where City Center now uh, stands. Uh, so the City Council had made a decision in the Redevelopment Commission to buy 88 acres in that area and master plan a new downtown. We had a City Center Drive, which wasn't connected at the time. It was a 126 range line, it was a three-way stop. Uh, and we've had hundreds of millions of dollars of both public and private money invested in these areas. But there's about four blocks in between and that's what's known as what we've dubbed the Midtown area. And that's what we're here about today. It's very exciting. Hmm. 
The main lake is made up of what I call post-industrial or buildings that are left over from the industrial area that for the most part are empty today or underutilized. Certainly the land is underutilized. We um, went out a few years ago and the Revolving Commission hired Jeff Speck, one of the most noted, notable city planners in the country, and asked him to carefully take a look at this. Jeff spent a lot of time in Carmel. We identified where every utility line was because it's expensive to move utilities when redevelopment is done. Uh, there's fiber optic along the Monon, there's water and sewer lines, electric lines, all sorts of utilities, water lines in the area. We have a 911 tower in the area as well as a water tower that helps maintain pressure in the central part of the city. Um, we looked very carefully at the Monon Trail and how it would interact with new development in the area. We looked at the densities very carefully and looked at the cost of providing services um, in a redevelopment area uh, as contrasted to a greenfield area and uh, quickly recognized that uh, in a redevelopment area one doesn't have to add a fire station to staff it two and a half to three million dollars a year. We generally don't have to add police in an area that's already being policed and much of the infrastructure is in place. Um, and believe that redevelopment is good for taxpayers because we do not have to invest as much money in public infrastructure as one would have to in a green field development. Um, we looked at the retail, both at the city center and in the art and design district, and recognized that we wanted to see this area uh, redeveloped, that it didn't make sense to have a lot of retail in it, maybe a little, but not a lot because uh, it's within that eight to 10 minute walk uh, that people will walk to get to retail uh, and either walk to the city center or to the arts and design district. And, and we wanted to make certain that uh, not too much land was donated towards retail. Um, and, and so we tried to lay these plans out not knowing exactly when the private sector would step up and say we want to redevelop this area, but we wanted to be prepared um, so it's very exciting after that work to be here today uh, with a private sector company, a local company, that is prepared to invest in the Midtown development. Um, we've been very fortunate over the years to have great private sector developers, almost always local developers. Um, so right now I'm pleased to introduce one of those developers um, who over the past year, few years has been transforming the art and design district, what we used to call Old Town, uh, to the north of Main Street um, with the addition of many houses. Um, and now Justin Moffat with the Old Town uh, Design Group is here to talk about his plans for Midtown. Justin. Good afternoon. Um, as a member of the inaugural Porch Fest Committee that was hosted in Old Town yesterday, I can tell you I'm very relieved that the weather came today. So uh, we had great attendance and it made us that much more excited to be part of the district. On behalf of Old Town Design Group, I'd like to thank each of you for being with us today for the announcement of our company's redevelopment plans for Midtown Carmel. I grew up in downtown Carmel, and while it was certainly never the wrong side of the tracks, my childhood memories are of an old downtown suffering from the impacts of suburbanization. In my lifetime, I've had the privilege of watching the old neighborhood come full circle, and I'm proud to say that I still live in the neighborhood where I grew up with four generations of my family. Uh, Mayor Brainerd, city council members, and many other community leaders have worked diligently for many years now to generate vibrancy in our city's urban core. In 2009, my business partner, Jeff Langston, and I decided to start a company called Old Town Design Group. We wanted to participate in the renaissance of Carmel's urban core. Old Town Design Group was initially formed as a home building company with the motto, Outstanding Locations, Timeless Designs. Our belief was that people desired to invest in new homes in the urban core. They just lacked the opportunity. In our first five years in business, we built over $25 million worth of new homes in the neighborhood, with another $20 million in homes 
pre-sold and planned for construction in the next 18 months. What we've discovered through our business is that there's overwhelming interest in opportunities to live and work within walking distance of the infrastructure our city leaders have worked so hard to develop. The past few years, the city has focused redevelopment efforts on the construction of City Center and the Arts and Design District on Main Street. The largely abandoned industrial area along the Monon Trail that we are referring to as Midtown Carmel divides Main Street from City Center. Standing here today, uh, looking outside this building, you can see the contrast between the old industrial buildings next to the beautiful revitalization efforts to the north and the south of us. We frequently hear comments about the unsightliness of the Monon Corridor in the Midtown area and the need for improvement. Along with my business partners, Jeff Langston and Andrew Greenwood, we decided to stop talking about the need for change in this neighborhood and started taking action. Our team has been able to assemble approximately 11 acres in Midtown with 1,200 feet of frontage along the east side of the Monon Trail and 570 feet of frontage along Rangeline Road. This will allow us to provide a main artery at 4th Street for traffic through the Midtown District. We've worked with Tom Gallagher and John Jackson at Ratio Architects for many months to develop a concept for the district that speaks to its roots as a largely industrial rail corridor. We're proposing an architecture with a feel of a revitalized industrial area, which we believe is represented well in our Midtown logo out here in front. This concept uh, really uh, drew from imagery used in, in great American places like Faneuil Hall and South Market in Boston, uh, the American Tobacco Historic District in Durham North, Durham, North Carolina, and the Pearl District in Portland, Oregon. These places were once hubs of industrial activity and now have been transformed into hubs of walkable, pedestrian-focused activity for living, working, and playing. The boundary map shown here on the far right, my far right, and the illustrated rendering shown beside me here represent our vision for what the Midtown District could become in the near future. These images include a beautiful public plaza next to the Monon Trail adjacent to where we're gathered today. We envision this plaza, similar to the one at Daniel Hall in Boston, to be a place where residents can gather for events or simply rest along their way between City Center and the Arts and Design District. The plaza is flanked to the east by a 60,000 square foot building with the possibility of light retail uses on the main level. This is the image shown here in the middle. We are actively negotiating with significant potential retail tenants and office tenants and plan to move the Old Town Design Group headquarters here. Moving south within our development plan uh, in this board on the far right, we're showing three to five story office buildings stretching from the Monon Trail to Range Line Road, along with the 700 space parking garage. At the very south end of our Midtown redevelopment plan, we're focusing on for sale residential flats. It is of particular note that Keith and Debbie Stockberger, the owners of Miller Auto Care on Range Line Road, have been very generous to collaborate with us in our Midtown redevelopment plans. Plans call for the relocation of Miller Auto Care within the district along Rangeline Road. This will allow us to bring 4th Street through Midtown from Rangeline to 3rd Avenue Southwest. The Stockburgers have believed in the vision of transforming Midtown and keeping their thriving enterprise within the community. We are proud to include Miller Auto Care within our redevelopment plans. Additionally, uh, I know that attorneys Jeff Minier and Sheila Marshall are working with us in order to keep their law practice on Rangeline Road and allow the 4th Street Road rebuild to impact their property. Um, we have really appreciated the enthusiastic response we've received from area businesses who have welcomed the proposed redevelopment of the Midtown area. It is our hope as a business to be complementary to the other thriving businesses that already exist within Midtown while creating additional activity to encourage their continued success. The Midtown redevelopment area in total uh, the plans that we're sharing with you here today include up to 285,000 square feet of office buildings with the possibility of light retail uses on the main levels at the street level. We're proposing a 700 car parking garage uh, adjacent to the office buildings and with the addition of up to 270 residential units, which will be primarily in, in condo flat type buildings. We estimate that this project could offer three to 400 full-time construction jobs each year during construction and 800 to 1,000 permanent jobs in the district. 
The total investment value of the Midtown plant is shown here today is between 130 and 150 million dollars. Later this week, our team will file a zoning request for the Midtown redevelopment area with the City of Carmel. It is our hope to complete the zoning process by early 2015 and be under construction with the first phase of development by summer of 2015. The total project will take approximately five years to complete, and the Old Town Design Group team is very anxious to get started. Again, we'd like to thank you for joining us today for the announcement of our Midtown Carmel plan. And after the press conference today, we will be very glad to stand around and answer any questions you might have for us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Justin. Justin mentioned several times that uh, the impact to businesses and the partnerships and strengthening of their businesses in the community. We have with us today the Colonel Chamber President Mayor Hoff. Thank you, Corey. It's not. Uh, it would be surprising to hear a pro-business comment from a uh, Chamber of Commerce executive. Um, but obviously, we believe very, very strongly that strong businesses make strong communities. So things that can be done to attract business, not just to the core of Carmel, but within all of our community, and for that matter, in our county, can make a difference. It can make a difference for families, for schools, for amenities like our library, our parks and recreation system, the Monon Trail, opportunities where people can be in place and staying in place can work, can play, can educate, and can recreate all within the community. We are especially pleased today to recognize one of our members, Old Town Design, who has chosen to take part in what will be a continued opportunity to bring more business opportunities to us and help Carmel remain the strong business community that, that it has been and continues to be with a different focus on what business means. It doesn't necessarily have to be along a very successful corridor and we're pleased to have that it can also be within a city center and all that that can mean to all of those who participate. So um, we're here to congratulate, to celebrate another opportunity for business, um, and I'm glad that you're here with us as well. Thank you, Mo. Thank you everyone for coming out, and again, special thanks to Blair Clark and Heather Ramsey for opening up this space. We're thrilled that uh, Old Town Design Group has taken this first step and, and we're excited to see where it goes. We're happy to take questions uh, after we close here. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to also mention that uh, as of now, uh, MidtownCarmel.com is live and you can download any of these images there uh, to use for, for Medium. Uh, so I encourage you to check out our website. Thank you. Hey, buddy. How are you?